Hey guys, let me know what you think by liking and commenting, and it really helps me and this channel out when you subscribe, so please click that button. Thanks a bunch! Today's going to be my first uh, entry in the Build a Train workshop. I hope you like it. The point of these is to put together a consist, a full train that you might be interested in or something that might pique your interest or something that may make you want to look into this train a little bit more. This first episode is actually kind of prompted by this new movie coming out, uh, Death on the Nile. I'm not a Poirot fan or anything like that, but I am a fan of the concept of this opulence that existed uh, around the turn of the century in Egypt. And what a lot of people don't know is that um, Egypt had one of the most extensive uh, rail networks in all of Africa. In fact, it was the first African country to get regular rail service. It went back all the way to 1853. So um, rail had been in existence for quite some time in Egypt um, and was quite advanced. In fact, over a thousand steam locomotives were used over the course of the 100 years that steam locomotives were the primary movers over it. Egyptian rails. And finally, once we get to the 1950s, we start seeing a lot more diesel power there. But uh, for a long time, steam ruled in Egypt, and they had a lot of wonderful trains that ran behind steam locomotives. So with that in mind, the train I'm going to put together today is an Egyptian one, at least as much as I can do. And it is going to focus on these wonderful LS models, um, international sleeping car company trains, that were uh, running in 1928. These are 1928 version sleeper cars, and uh, I've always liked them. These are actually reissues by LS Models. I had missed them the first time around. I think they came out with them around 2018, something like that, and I didn't get them, but then they just recently reissued them, so I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and pick these up because goodness knows if they're ever going to reissue them again. So you can see here opening the box that they have one of the original um, sales flyers from earlier. This is from the late 1800s and these cars once again are from 1928, but uh, I'll show you these in one second. Ellis Models wasn't actually the first to offer these Egypt cars. River Rossi did it earlier. I can't quite figure out when. I think it was in the late 1990s, but I'm not 100% sure. If I can be a little bit bold, I actually think these are probably River Rossi's nicest cars they've ever offered. I've seen one in person and I've seen them on eBay, but the eBay prices are way, way too rich for my blood. So ironically, the, <laughs> the premier producer here, LS Models, I think theirs actually pales slightly in comparison to the River Rossi's. And you can see the parts bag here and how I, well, I can tell. Um, I'll give you a close-up of these later, but the detail pieces are very intricate. Very, very intricate. And they look great. Even though the River Rossi's, I think, are a little bit nicer in some ways, there is no doubt that these are the absolute and nicest <laughs> cars I've had in terms of their packaging. This is a microfiber cloth that is covering up the car. And we pull it out and you'll see it actually has the um, logo for the um, Wagon Litz company on it. It's great. Well, let me spin this around a bit so you can get a good look at it. And later on, I'll actually take an even a closer view. I'll pull the top for you and look through the window so you can even get a better view. Even though in theory, this cream and white is a very, very simple scheme. It's beautiful. There's just a really understated elegance to this color scheme, this cream. I, I, wow, I really like it. I can't get enough of it. I love looking at it. Maybe it reminds me of vanilla or something. I don't know, but it looks wonderful. If you haven't had any LS Models cars, um, then you be, I mean, they're a premium manufacturer and their cars feel great. I mean, look at this cool microfiber cloth. Every single one of these has this microfiber cloth. And you'll see when I flip it over that it is not quite up to Rapido's undercarriage details. Doesn't quite have, it doesn't have separate piping for the most part. But if you look, this thing um, that swivels on here, that is the generator with a gener generator belt. So. On a lot of these older um, cars, they actually ran the electricity 
off of the axles and that's what's being depicted here is the belt that would go around the axle and spin the generator so that you get electricity in the car. Effectively this is a five car set. You buy the two car set and then the three car set and you'll get five cars but I want I like longer trains as you may have noticed so I actually bought two three car sets. That gets me eight in total and I think that'll be just about the right length. Unfortunately, what you can't get, and I don't know if you'll ever be able to get, are the baggage car, and I don't know if these trains originally had dining cars or not, but you can't get one of those, so you're going to have a truncated train. You are going to have sleeping cars only for the most part. I think the River Rossi ones are sleeping cars. Now, there were a lot of overnight trains in Egypt, so this could easily depict one of those, but I think would think one of those would at least have a dining slash a lounge car or something like that, so uh, I, I don't know if LS model is ever going to produce one. When we look at the interior, we can see what great pains they went to to represent this, including things like, you know, the, the window grating here, um, all the door handles, and I assume those are their little lights or their the room numbers. They're placed with quite a bit of care. There's even texturing here that differs between the doors and the actual hallway components. I, that's a really nice touch, and of course, no one will notice that at three feet, which is my usual preferred viewing distance. If you look here, the coat of arms is actually raised. It's not just painted on it's actually raised up and once again that's the way it really looks it's a really really nice choice of detail all the lettering is spot on and and really crisp and clean as you would expect from a model and when we go to the interior you can see how each compartment is a little bit different um, and the details really stand out the uh, individual logos on the beds here, which again, the bed has different texturing depending on which part of the bed you're looking at. There's little desks. Some of the cabins have more details than others. And by the way, what you're seeing here is the Wagon Litz logo. Um, but if you look, there's different desks in each one of them. There's, you'll never even see this right, but there's a washroom in this suite. This is a two compartment suite. I've seen this in a lot of other high-end models. They'll put details in that'll never be seen, but it matters to some modelers knowing that those things are there. And that is certainly the case with this model. My only complaint is that the model is not lit from the factory. This is still something that Europeans don't do, but I really believe that it's time for anyone that is selling a premium model to have lit compartments. I think that was really the final stage in the evolution of the premium passenger car. I'm going to generally trust that LS models did their homework here and these look like the cars did in 1928. In fact, if we go through some of these images, we can see how actually there were many different cars, but it looks like the one that was derailed is the same as these cars. The big issue with this consist is finding a locomotive. I mean, uh, obviously Egypt is really, really underrepresented in the model railroad world, but um, now we have these cars, but what we don't have is the steam engine. From what I can ascertain, it looks like a lot of British and maybe some French and German steam locomotives were used, but that's the problem, particularly if I'm trying to find a British one. It's almost always going to be an OO scale locomotive, and because of that, they're going to look a little bit bastardized. But on top of that, since they didn't actually make one of these Egyptian locomotives, I'm going to have to either customize it or pay someone to do it, and I'm not looking forward to that. Heck, I wouldn't even know which steam locomotive to buy in the first place. As far as what you can do now, of course, you have to get these LS model sets. Uh, I got two of the three car sets and one of the two car sets. Prototypicality is tough because we're missing the steam engine, right? And we're missing cars like the baggage car and the dining car. These are premium models, but you don't actually have to buy a lot of them. So the cost is relatively decent. It's relatively affordable. I'm surprised LS models put these back out. And as you've seen, the River Rossi ones are difficult to find. So this is a fairly rare consist if you want to put one together. There aren't very many opportunities for variations because you've only got these LS models cars or the River Rossi's ones. So th there's really not much you can do there. All right, I admittedly start off with a bit more of a difficult consist to put together for this first feature. And because, you know, I'm just trying to figure out, I'm trying to figure out what this is all going to look like. In the running session, I'm going to use an REE or RE Mikado SNCF steam locomotive. Frankly, this is the best steam locomotive I own. It has an awesome and reliable smoke unit that not only shoots out the stack, but actually um, pumps steam down below um, for a steam vent. So it's great. And I think a particular company could learn a lot from these. 
I'm also going to grab the baggage car from that set as well because, again, there should be at least one on this train, I think. Like I said, this is a new feature that I'm going to have. I'm going to try to help people build trains, particularly ones they may not be familiar with and they may or may not be prototypical. If you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear it since I'm an open book right now. Like usual, I appreciate your viewership and I wish you all the best and continued happy model railroading. Take care. I'll catch you next time.